Now, another interesting um, phenomena that will stop the propagation of joint growth is a drop in fluid pressure. Remember when we talked about natural hydraulic fracture and how the fluid pressure in the crack created tensile stresses at the tip that would propagate the fracture. However, when that crack widens up and there's more volume for the fluid to fill, then all of a sudden you have a pressure drop and that can often cause the stress to release to the point where it's no longer significant enough to propagate the crack anymore. Now also, when your joint or your fracture is going to enter a region of differential stress, different tensile stress, different strength, different stiffness, all of those things can serve to either speed up the propagation or to halt it or slow it. Uh, for instance, if it sinks into the ductal asthenosphere, then the plastic um, yielding is going to dissipate the force that, and the stress and it's not going to propagate anymore. I mean, it's kind of like a, a brittle fracture moving into silly putty or clay, you know, that's not going to act the same anymore. Now, remember, we talked before about axial ratios when we spoke about Griffith cracks, and we said that cracks with high axial ratios were preferentially going to feel the stresses in propagation. So another little interesting thing that happens is if a crack is to widen or fatten up, then the stress on it is somewhat released. So when that axial ratio shrinks a little bit, you can also have a slowdown in the propagation or even a halt in the propagation of that particular joint. Now, the next thing that we want to focus on is veins, veins and vein arrays. So the first, the uh, first kind of vein array that we're going to talk about, which of course is a whole bunch of veins that are obviously in a pattern or a set or a system together, is this right here. This is a planar systematic array. And this is, ba now remember we said veins are mineral filled joints or cracks or fractures or any kind of open space. So that's what we're talking about. These planar systematic arrays are fillers of kind of uh, pre-existing systematic joint sets. And then you have stockwork vein arrays. That's this kind of right here. It's messy, it's all over the place. These are formed when the rock has been shattered, either by the existence of really high fluid pressure or you've got the result of pervasive fracturing and, and this is often associated with folding and faulting in the region. And then you have here what we call an N echelon vein array. And these are formed in a couple of different ways. First of all, you can have a filling of these in echelon joint arrays that are formed in the hackle fringe of a larger joint. And we talked about earlier just briefly, but the hackle fringe represents the breakup of that joint in short little segments whenever it enters a region of the rock that's got a different stress field. Uh, so it breaks up and that's one of the things that halts it. Now, these n echelon arrays can also develop as a consequence of shear in the rock body. And uh, this is associated with displacement across a, uh, a fault zone. So the fractures that comprise this little array usually initiate, see this, parallel to our sigma 1, and at about 45-ish degrees to the shear here. This is the shear that's kind of represented in the rock. And um, they open up because of the tensile stresses when you've got this displacement. So you have movement this way, movement that way, tensile stresses are created, and these little cracks that are developed parallel to our sigma one can open up later to be filled with mineral. Now consider once these are formed, they kind of, uh, well once they fill with mineral fill anyway, they create realities or objects within the rock. So if you've got more shear, then it's going to rotate these veins and increase the angle. So see, this is what's happening here. They're starting to get deformed by the shear. But interestingly, even as they're deformed, they still want to propagate. But when they propagate, those increments are going to have that same initial orientation of the 45 degrees to the shear. And so they create, remember we call this a sigmoidal morphology and so you can see this very interestingly. You should Google a picture of what it looks like in real rock, but you can see these develop. And they've just got a very distinctive morphology, as you can see. And then oftentimes, new fractures will actually form right here. They'll have their genesis right in the middle of the uh, 
the original older fractures and they have kind of an oblique angle across it. So you'll often see not only your array, but you'll see the beginning of these younger joints opening up there, um, sort of uh, perpendicular to new stresses on the rock. And so now that we're talking about veins, or our mineral filled openings, then let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of vein fill. Um, briefly, we can talk about blocky fill versus fibrous fill in these little open veins. Now, blocky fill is something that you're usually going to see in shallow formation. Oftentimes, these, this is a picture of it, these little blocks will show crystal faces. And if you remember back to mineralogy, that means they had to um, grow in kind of an open cavity environment. Well, it's only in shallow uh, shallow crust environments that you have low enough pressures to allow for the existence of an open cavity or a cavity where the fluid pressure can be high enough to hold a crack open. And so if you see blocky mineral fill, then you kind of have an idea of where it must have come from. Fibrous fill, however, is a little more confusing um, for people who are studying it. It's not completely understood and why it grows the way that it grows is not completely understood but there are some good theories. Uh, the first one is that they can grow by a process we call crack seal and so when you have a, a high pressure environment and you've got a crack that's under a lot of pressure so it's just barely opening up you can have a little bit of mineral fill in there and as it forms a mineral fill those tiny little nuclei seal up that crack again. And then the stresses are such that the crack tries to propagate a little bit more. Sigma-3 maybe pulls on it a little bit more. The crack opens up and a little bit more crystal can grow, but it tends to grow off those original nucleated growths. And so the theory is that it will grow upwards in a continuous crystal from those original blocky uh, beginnings. So you can see a little picture here I made where you've got just the teeny tiny crack and then it opens up and you see how the fibers are just growing that way. And notice that the fibers are going to be oriented what? They're parallel to our sigma 3 direction. And so that's one of the theories. It's called crack seal because every time the crack opens up a little it's sealed with that mineral fill. And it's interesting to note why this happens, because as cracks open up when they're in high pressure environments, remember that they reduce the pore pressure in the crack, because the crack has opened up and created more volume. What does that do? That actually decreases the solubility of minerals, because generally solubility is increased in high pressure environments. And so when the solubility is decreased, the solution can become saturated, and there you have mineral precipitation. So that's why minerals preferentially precipitate in these pores and cracks because that's where the reduced pore pressure allows for precipitation. Now the other theory that we talk about actually does not allow for the crack to open up itself. It's more descriptive of the crack being opened by the formation of these minerals. So that let's say little ions are migrating along the grains and this is this is a diffusion that's caused by the, the pore pressure orientation in your rock body. And they precipitate at the tips of the originally nucleated crystallized mineral. So again, you have that continuous crystal growth that is going to grow as a fiber along that uh, axis. But it actually, the, the growth of the mineral is actually pushing the tensile crack open. So there's never any open space. There's just this pressure exerted by the growth of the minerals that then pushes the crack to be larger and larger. And these can often be very small cracks, but they can often be very large cracks. Uh, and then we go to our fibrous vein interpretation. Because now that we've talked about fibrous vein fill, we want to talk about how we interpret the different ways that that happens. 